Hey guys, welcome back to my channel and welcome back to another what's for dinner video. If you're new here, my name is Jess and I'm a stay at home mom of two and our family loves food. We love to try new things. We like to create new things. We like finding recipes to try and we love the classics and the family favorites. So we're always making something good here. And this week I have three delicious dinners that I'm sharing with you. One is a classic. One is another classic with a little bit of a twist on it. And one is something completely new that I came up with and it turned out delicious. So if you're interested in some yummy dinners, stick around. I hope you guys enjoy the video. If you do, don't forget to hit that like button and let's get to it. All right, so starting off, we're making some red bean and sausage gumbo, but I'm gonna start off with the bread that's gonna go with it. This is a recipe I found for 30 minute dinner rolls. And these turned out pretty good, so I'm going to share this recipe with you. So I'm starting off by adding my water, oil, sugar, and yeast to my mixing bowl. And of course, you could do this in a regular bowl too and mix it by hand. And I'm going to let this sit for about five to eight minutes until the yeast gets all bubbly. And then we'll stir in our egg, some softened butter, and some salt. After that, you're gonna add in your flour one cup at a time. You're just gonna mix that until you have a soft dough that isn't sticky, and then continue to let it mix in the mixer for five minutes. So this recipe, I'll have it linked down below. She said that if she's using a 10 by 15 pan, this makes 18 rolls. And I had a nine by 13 pan, which she says she makes 15 rolls in. So I'm cutting my dough into 15, mostly even sized pieces. You could weigh this if you want, but I'm not gonna bother. So I formed these into balls and put them in my greased 9 by 13 and then I covered it with a piece of greased parchment paper and a kitchen towel and let these rise for 10 minutes.
and then you're just going to brush with some milk and bake these at 400 degrees for 10 to 12 minutes. When mine were done, I also brushed them with some melted butter and these were so good. So the dishwasher is going, so sorry if it's annoying. I'm finally getting around to making gumbo tonight. So I had these peppers frozen for it and then I took them out of the fridge the other day because I was gonna make gumbo or I took them out of the freezer and put them in the fridge. And so they thawed because we ended up getting pizza and then last night we ate at my dad's. So I have red and green bell peppers. I'm gonna cut up some celery and some sweet onion. And since I'm gonna end up blending them up, I'm just gonna cook them in a skillet with a little bit of butter and get them all tender and then I'll add them to my chicken broth and blend them up. So if you watch my vlog videos, I talked about making this recipe not too long ago. And I'd seen a bunch of different recipes for it and I didn't like how any of them were exactly. So I just decided to come up with my own and I'll type out in the description box what I use. That way if you want to make this, you can make it too. So I just got all of my chopped up veggies into my skillet with some butter and some salt and pepper and I'm going to let these cook down until they're completely tender. I am going to be blending mine up. Now if you don't want to do that, you don't have to. So you could dice these more evenly to the way you want them and just cook them to your liking and add them to the gumbo later. But in our house, I'm the only one that eats whole cooked peppers and onions and celery. so. We're gonna blend this up and it's gonna hide in the sauce and you still get all that flavor without the texture. Alright, so while my veggies are cooking, I have a package of beef smoked sausage, and then I have some smoked ham. So we're going to cut this up. Mm, I'll probably just use all of both. I don't know. We'll see. Alright, so now I'm going to get all of my veggies into my little blender cup. Is this going to be big enough? I don't know. 
Probably not. <laughs> That's usually how it works around here. Ah, I'm making a mess. I'm going to add in some of my chicken broth. I have a four cup container. Who's whining? Oh, I thought it was one of the dogs. Some liquid in there. And then, I'll just get these blended up. Now, obviously, you could leave those whole, but if you're not new around here, you know that nobody else but me wants them whole. Alright, so I'm just going to get my ham and sausage browned up a little bit in my pot with a little bit of butter and a little olive oil. Once those are good and brown, we'll take them out and then we'll start making our roux. Alright, so we've got a little bit of color on all of our sausage and ham, so I'm going to take these out and put them on a plate and leave all that goodness in the bottom. Alright, so time for our roux. So I have my butter and my flour in my pot and we're making our roux. This I put on like medium, medium low heat, I think, and just kept stirring this for about 15 to 20 minutes until it started to turn a golden brown because in this you want that flavor of that brown roux. And then I just added all of my seasonings to the roux and let them cook in there for a few minutes before I added in everything else. So now we're going to add in our big can of Creole style beans 
our veggie mixture or your veggies if you didn't blend them. And then we're gonna add our meat back in and we're just gonna let all of this come together. Also, I don't know who packaged these bay leaves, but they do not need a shaker top. So once everything was in the pot, I just put this on medium low and let it simmer pretty good for, I think it was an hour and a half to two hours, but it'll be good even if you only have 20 minutes. But this turned out so delicious. So I just served this gumbo with some jasmine rice and some sliced green onions. And this was so good, you guys. I've never made gumbo myself. I've made something similar to it. But yeah, this was so good. If you like red beans and rice and you like gumbo, it's kind of a mixture of the two. So I highly recommend trying this one out. Next up, we're making some chicken fried chicken. And this is one of those things that there's always a debate over is, what's the difference between chicken fried chicken and fried chicken? <laughs> and the way I think of it is, and I could be wrong too, but this is just how I grew up knowing this. Fried chicken is on the bone. Like you would get from KFC, pieces of fried chicken. Chicken fried chicken is boneless and tenderized and you eat it with gravy, kind of like, chicken fried steak but it's chicken so I don't know if that makes sense but if you know the real answer <laughs> let me know down in the comments below that's how my grandma or my mom would have told you the difference so to me that is the real answer but let me know if you know a technical answer so I don't have an actual recipe for this just like my grandmother wouldn't either we <laughs> just kind of throw this together and it turns out delicious every time so Adam just tenderized our meat with a rolling pin because we don't have a meat mallet and he just seasoned those all over with some salt and pepper and then in a big container we're putting two eggs some Tony's Creole seasoning some onion powder garlic powder and milk and some Frank's hot sauce He just got that all mixed together and then started coating the chicken in the egg mixture. And normally you would have a separate flour bin to bread your chicken with. Adam decided to just add the flour on in here with it. But this actually turned out perfect. This chicken was so crunchy and delicious on the outside and so juicy on the inside.
To go along with this, we were making some mashed potatoes and I decided to throw some carrots in there too, cause why not? So I just boiled those together. And then as our other side, I made a can of creamed corn with about a cup of frozen corn thrown in there so that it has both textures and it was so good. So we just fried our chicken until it was brown and crispy and the internal temperature was 165. And we served it with our creamed corn and our carrot mashed potatoes and some country gravy. And this dinner was so good. This is like a childhood favorite. Next up, I'm making some hot honey barbecue pulled pork sandwiches. So I just have, I think this is about two pounds of this pork roast. We had cut it in half and I had this in the freezer. So I'm just chopping this up and I sprayed the inside of my crock pot and threw all this pork in there and we're just gonna throw in our seasonings and stuff. I don't have exact measurements for this either, but I just threw in some salt and pepper and I'm gonna use some applewood smoke seasoning some garlic powder, some onion powder, and then I put in a big squirt of Craig's barbecue sauce. This one is our favorite. I added a few drops of liquid smoke and a good drizzle of some hot honey that Adam made. And then I'm gonna add in a few tablespoons of butter. So once I got that all in there, I just put the lid on and I cooked mine on high for about five hours just because I wanted to make sure it was done when Adam got home and I had my bread to make and all of that. For these sandwiches, I wanted to make some homemade bread. So I found this recipe for brioche buns and these were so delicious. I'll have that recipe linked down below. So I just heated up my milk to 110 degrees and I'm adding in my sugar 
and my yeast and we're gonna get this mixed up and let it sit for about 10 to 15 minutes until it's super frothy. Then in my mixing bowl, I'm gonna add in my flour, some sugar, and some salt, and get this pretty well combined, and then make a well in the center for our liquid ingredients. So in that well in the center of the dry ingredients, I'm adding my four eggs and then that yeast mixture that we made. And I'm gonna beat this slowly until it sort of combines and then mix it on high. Once everything is pretty well incorporated, I added in a half a cup of sliced softened butter, and then we're just gonna mix this for about another 10 minutes until it's shapeable and isn't sticking to the bowl. Now I just put this on a floured surface and shaped it into a ball and I sprayed a glass bowl with some cooking spray and I put my dough ball in there and covered it with some plastic wrap that I sprayed with cooking spray and I just let this sit for about an hour until it was risen. Now I'm just gonna cut this dough into eight pieces and form it into balls. And honestly, these turned out pretty big, so I think you could even make 10 or 12 of these, depending on the size you want them. Next time I'll probably make 10. But I just got these formed into balls and then I put them on some parchment paper on baking sheets and let them rise again for about 45 minutes. Once my pork was cooked through and tender, I'm just gonna shred this up and then add it back to its juices in the crock pot. And I think I added a little bit of extra honey and some salt and pepper, and this turned out so delicious.
While I was getting the bread ready, Adam made a quick slaw with a green apple, a carrot, some salt and pepper, garlic and onion powder, some lemon juice, mayo, and apple cider vinegar. Once my rolls had risen, I just brushed them with an egg wash and added some sesame seeds. And the recipe says to bake them for 25 to 30 minutes, but mine only took 20 and they turned out perfect. We're only gonna look at the pretty ones. Cause something happened to that one. These are huge and I probably could have made 10 out of it instead of eight. Like, look at the size of that. They smell good and they're pretty. So let them cool for a minute, cut them open and make sandwiches. As always, thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to hit that like button down below and subscribe if you're new so you don't miss any future videos. And we'll see you guys in the next one.